All right. I don't know why that minimized, but here we go. Uh, this is the 2013 Computer Science A Free Response question number two. Um, I did distribute this to my class uh, just the other day. I hope you, if you're watching this, you've had a chance to uh, attempt this problem. I, I don't think it's an overly complicated one. I think it's great practice for um, what you're likely to do. And um, with that, let's let's dive in. Uh, what we're doing is we're looking at a um, class for a game, a multiplayer game called Token Pass, which as you read through this, you'll realize is a simplified version or maybe a early version of a Moncala game for any of you who ever played Moncala. Hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, uh, each board, uh, each player begins with a random number of tokens, at least one, but no more than 10 that are placed on a linear game board. Um, there's one position on the game board for each player. Um, after the game board has been filled, the player is randomly chosen to begin the game. Each position on the board is numbered starting at zero because it's an array, duh. Um, basically, you got a bunch of, think of them like marbles, and if it's player's two's turn, he picks up all six of them. He gives one, one player three. Oops. There we go. He gives one to player three. One to, so this became zero. Gives one to player zero, another one to player one. That's three of his tokens. He gives one to himself again, and another one here, and another one here, and he up his six tokens that he had and redistributed them. So it is the Moncala game, um, and that's kind of what this example on the show, right? So we had done that. We ended up with five, three, one, twelve, and now it would be next turn, um, and we'd start, and then we take those twelve and distribute them. But you get the idea. Hopefully, if you don't read it more carefully, um, this is, is the class that represents that game. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you have an integer array that is the board. Um, you have an integer that stores who the current player is. And uh, in part A of this problem, we're going to create the constructor. So we create the board array uh, to be when we when we instantiate an object here, um, a token pass object. We are going to give it a player count, how many players we want this game. And it's going to uh, fill each player with at least one and no more than 10. Um, yeah, and no more than 10 uh, uh, um, things, marbles, whatever you want to call them. Sorry, tokens. Whew. It's early. It's actually 8:49, so it's not that early. Anyway, uh, you initialize. You also have to initialize the current player to somebody who's in the game. If there, are, you know, six players, we can have it be current player. Current player could be anyone zero, one, two, three, or five. Um, that's why that player minus one. If you tried to do it. As, oh, come on, there we go. If you try to do it as player up to player count, you'd run into that issue. Um, of having an index out of bounds. Uh, part B of this problem then uh, is going to be the part that actually distributes the um, it distributes the the tokens. So you know again, if this was our game board, we had six. Here, well, we take it out. That'd be the first step, and then we put one, two, three, four, five, six. And what you see, at least what I see immediately, is that oh. We're going to need something that repeats over and over that after it's player, you know, three's turn, it goes back to being player zero's turn. One, then two, two, three, then zero again, then one, then two, then three, then zero, and so on. Um, so that, uh, that, 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 my train of thought left me there. Um, My, uh, oh, yeah, anytime you're doing something repeating like that, that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need the module uh, arithmetic. That, um, I'm going to mod by the number of players. So I'm assuming I'm going to use that somewhere in this plan as well. Um, when I was up here and in initializing, I'm obviously seeing that I'm going to need math.random, which if you recollect, 
uh, will return something between zero and one. Uh, of course, if you don't, don't recollect, you can always go to the reference sheet here and you can see that the, where did it go? Random math class returns a double random, now returns a double value greater than or equal to zero and less than 1.0. So anywhere from zero to 0 0.999999. Um, so we'll have to keep that in mind as we um, write our code here. So I think with that, let's uh, dive in, into our problem. First thing we have to do, part A, create the constructor. Uh, we're gonna create a board um, just so that we can recollect we have some called board and we have an integer current player. We're gonna to wanna to initialize each of those things and we're given a number of players. So maybe the first thing we wanna do is create that array for the board. It's an integer array equals a new int array and the number of um, the size of the array, the length of the array that we wanna give it is the number of players that we have. And that is a parameter that's given us when this object is initiated. So there you go. There's my new board. Um, next thing, I need, uh, I need to fill it. So I need to go through every single one of these and give, give it a random number. So anytime I'm going through, um, it seems like it makes sense to do a for loop. I always int i equals zero, right like this, i less than, I could either do board, I'm just gonna do board dot length. So for every one in here, now of course I could have player count there because those two things are the same. What I wanna do is set board i, so each one equals, now I need some random number so I can do um, well I gotta think about this for a second I want to do math dot random that will give me something between 0 and 1 and I'm gonna want to multiply that by um, well the biggest I want it to be would be 10 the smallest I want it to be is 1 so I'm gonna go times 10 which will return me something between you know this will get me something between 0 to 9.99999. And of course, if I cast that as an integer, because they do need to be an integer, it's going to return me something between 0 and 9. And I really want it from 1 to 10. So I think I'm going to need a plus 1s as well. So here we go. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to ultimately cast whatever I come up with as an integer, math, that random, times 10 plus 1. And our operation should work just fine for me on that. So there, I've initialized each one. What else do I need to do? Oh, I need to choose who's going to, which player it's going to be. So um, that was the variable current player. Minimize that. And, um, again, same thing here. I'm probably going to need to cast it as integer because I'm using math.random. Uh, um, and this I could be, again, board.length or player count. I'm just going to do time player count. This time I don't need plus one because if I have six players, this little will give me something between 0 and point five point nine 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 nine, and uh, when I cast it as an integer it just truncates it so that'll give me something between 0 and 5 which is exactly what I want um, all right I think that's all I need part a complete uh, part B uh, let's see part B we need to just oh this is where we distribute the tokens um, the post condition, we don't actually 
actually change the current player. That's probably important to know, even though that would be the next logical step in this game. We are not actually changing the current player. Um, so I, what I'm thinking is I'm, you know, distributing them. I'm going to current player 0, 1, 2, 3 here has some um, number of tokens. I got to first get that number of tokens. And then I got to turn this player's down to zero. And then I need to go th through each one and add one until I run out. So while I still have some, um, I'll get rid of them. So while, may, sounds like I'm going to do a while, um, a while loop. So what did I say? The first thing I wanted to do was um, get my number of tokens. So int number uh, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to call it NT because it's shorter. So that's going to be my number of tokens. And um, we need to get how many my current player has. So that would be uh, board. Current player. Uh, let's see. That's how many tokens I've got. Um, next thing I want to do is set that player's tokens, current players, down to zero. Um, and then I need to iterate through. Um, so I need... I might need a variable to track which player I'm giving it to. Do I need that? Well, I need to know how, yeah. Yeah, that's probably going to be easier if I just have a integer uh, next equals, we'll start with the current player. Because then what I want to do is what? number of tokens is greater than zero. I go to the, I'm going to change what the next, I'll go to the next player. So next equals itself plus one. Here's where, remember, if I get to the end, I got to go back to the beginning. So I'm going to mod that by how many play I have. I don't have a variable here defined for number of players, but if you remember, of course, it's going to be just how many spots there are on the board. So I do board, here we go, that length. So I'll go to the next player. I will do that next player. Um, that, that'll just increase by, so I think I can just do a plus, and then the number that I have, the number of tokens, is going to decrease by one, I just gave it to the next player. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. That would distribute them all and goes to the next player. And that'll keep running while we still have tokens left to distribute. And then we're all set. So I think that that's complete. Um, I'm, I, I feel like that was too easy. So I'm going to do a quick check on my answer. Uh, you can always check your own answers. Um, just keep in mind that, of course, there are more than one uh, solution to some of these things. So you may have come up with a slightly different way of doing it. And that's fine. Um.